And when you found it, say, Brother Jason, I found it. Oh, all right, amen. All right, Romans chapter 5, verse number 1, uh, the Bible reads this way. Uh, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Uh, so we're justified by faith, and as a result, we gain peace from with, with God. And this comes to us by virtue of, uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So you don't gain peace with God through Muhammad. No, you don't gain peace with God through good works. You no. don't gain peace with God by going to church. No. You gain peace with God and justification in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Uh, amen. Verse number two. Uh, by whom also we have access. So we get access by Christ uh, into this grace wherein we stand. So uh, what are we standing on? What are we standing in? We're standing in grace uh, by faith in Christ uh, which imputes unto us justification uh, which will result one day in our glorification. What do you think? Where do we stand and rejoice? And, and as a result of us standing in grace and in faith, we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Amen. That was a lot there. Uh, you can be seated today in the presence uh, of our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, here in uh, Romans uh, chapter uh, number 5, uh, Paul is sort of on the uh, back side of dealing with what I think is probably one of the greatest questions of all time. Uh, in fact, I would say that a lot of people, even though there's a decline in America uh, of church attendance and of Bible reading and of prayer time and of care and concern about God, even though we are on a decline as a nation, I would say that there are people all across the, 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 the country this morning uh, that are seeking to answer uh, this very question. Yeah, uh, they've gone into church where works are demanded, where baptism is key to salvation, where we have to do so many Hail Marys or say yeah. so many prayers or yeah. go to this extreme or that extreme to work our way into the answer uh, to this question. Uh, but if we would simply, I think, read the Bible, we'd find out that the Bible had the answer uh, the whole time. Yeah, uh, that, that question that I'm referring to is how can a man be right uh, in the sight of God. Uh, how can he be right? How can I uh, be right? How can I gain God's approval? How can I gain uh, God's justification? What can I do uh, knowing my sin, knowing the state of my sin? What can I do to be right uh, in the sight of God? Uh, amen. You say, you say, well, that's not that, that, that difficult of a question to answer. No, it actually is when you consider uh, who you are. Uh, maybe not who you are present tense if you're born again, but if you consider who you were past tense before you were born again, yeah. then you think, man, oh, wait a minute, how can a man like me be right in the sight of God? Yeah, sure. Knowing that all I've done and all the trespasses I've committed and all the mistakes I've made and all yeah. the sins that yeah. I've indulged in and all of the hurt that I've caused and yeah. selfishness that I've pushed and all the anger that I've pushed out and all the bitterness that I've pushed yeah. forward and all the trouble that I've caused and all yeah. the trouble that I've been. How can and somebody like me be right in the sight of uh, God. You say, Brother Jason, I don't know if it's really that extreme. Well, look at verse number 9 of Romans chapter number 5 so that we can see how extreme it is. Well, the Bible said in verse number 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath uh, through him. So uh, who was I? I was somebody that was deserving of his wrath. I was somebody yeah. that stirred up the wrath, yeah, the, the anger, uh, the, 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 the rage, uh, the wrath uh, of God. And God saw me doing what I was doing and yeah. knew that I knew better. And he uh, was angry with the condition of my life and the things that I was doing. Yeah. And it stirred up his wrath. Amen. Look at verse number 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. Notice that term. Analogy. In verse number 9, I stir up his wrath. And by the time verse number 10 rolls around, it explains very carefully to me that I was, quote, an enemy of 
God. I need to be of God. I mean, those are big terms, right? And I mean, we have allies and we have enemies. We have allies in countries that are on our side. Uh, and, and in fact, probably the vast majority of them that say they are really aren't. Uh, amen. But we also have definite enemies out there. We know that communist China is an enemy. We know that probably communist Russia is an enemy. Uh, amen. So we know we have enemies. Uh, but it's be one thing. I'll take on the whole Chinese Communist Party before I become an enemy of God who yeah. created me and made me and has the ability uh, to put me in eternal fire uh, forever. I don't want that uh, enemy. Amen. You say, why would God do that? I didn't write this, by the way. This was written before you ever showed up this morning. Right. That we were enemies of God, verse number 10. We were filled with, we were uh, recipients of his wrath. Look at Romans chapter number 3 and verse number 10. Romans 3 and 10, the Bible reads, as it is written, there is no, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. I, I had no understanding of God. Before I met him, I didn't understand him. I didn't understand justification. I didn't understand redemption. I didn't understand uh, how much he loved me. I didn't understand what he did for me on the cross. I was without understanding. As a result of that, I did not seek after God, verse number 11. So I didn't seek after him. He's worthy, by the way, to be sought. He's worthy for people to show up on a Sunday morning and say, this is the Lord's day. Let us seek the Lord and find the Lord and understand the Lord and gain wisdom from the Lord. But when I was out there, I did not seek after him. I had no understanding of him. Verse number 12 said they are all gone out of the way. So Brother Rick, I went out of the way. I did not understand him. I did not seek after him. Verse 13 said their throat is an open sepulcher. Uh, with their tongues they have used to deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. I hope we are getting the picture slightly. This is God's view of us prior to conversion that we were all sinners we had gone out of the way we did not seek after him he gave us the way to go but we chose to go the opposite yeah. path the destruction verse 16 and misery out of their ways the way of peace have they not known and then the Bible caps all of that off in verse 23 by saying for all have sinned yeah. if you really read Romans 3 verses 10 through 22 and you read it through its fullest, you cannot get away from the fact that what God is saying is that all people everywhere are guilty and deserving of his wrath. Yes, so then upon that grounds, now I ask the question, now I look at myself in light of who I was. I was a man that had gone out of the way. I was a man that did not seek after God. I was a man that had no understanding. I was a man whose mouth was full of cursing and bitterness and anger. I was a man whose feet were quick to shed blood and quick to run to mischief. I was slow to run to God yeah, and my. quick to run to sin. This is the man that I was before I knew him. And so this is the, the question that is before us. How can a man like me be right, be right, be holy, be justified in the sight of God? Amen. Amen. That's good. Now, I don't know how long I've been preaching, but i got to hurry. Yeah. Yeah. Verse number one, the, the Bible said, therefore, being justified by faith. Well, there's the answer. Uh, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So yeah. the answer yeah. then lies in justification uh, by faith. It lies in justification yeah. by faith. Yeah. It lies in the fact that God has sent his son to die uh, for us. And if we will believe that, if we will cling to that, if we will run to that, yeah. if when our mind is finally yeah. open and we can finally seek after God, if we will yeah, run yeah, after yeah, the yeah, Lord yeah. and believe he died for our sins, yeah. then we can be justified, yeah, yeah, forgiven, yeah. right in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. This is the Christian message. It is. Thank you, Lord. 
the anti-Christian message it will be preached in plenty of Christian churches this morning. That's right. Uh, but this is the Christian message. Yeah. yeah. Amen. This is the biblical message. Yeah, that's good. You say, what do you mean, Brother Jason? Because uh, why would anti-Christian messages be preached in Christian churches? Because people don't want to. It, it takes too much uh, clinging uh, to him and less clinging to me in order for me to believe that I can be justified by him alone. Uh, we always feel like we got to do something else. I got to be something else. I got to go somewhere else. Yeah, I got to put on something else. I got to take off something else. And then when I finally live up and marry and I look like God and talk yeah. like God and act like God, then then I can be justified in the sight of God. But that, my friend, this anti-Christian biblical, anti-Christian and anti-biblical message. The truth is this. The only way for a man to be right in the sight of God is by faith in Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, God, Lord. Amen. Yeah. It's just sanctification is a whole other story. But we're not talking about that this morning. We're talking about justification. Yeah, that's right. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Now, I want you to notice this. Uh, I guess a couple of things, and uh, I'll be through here in a moment. Uh, number one, I want you to notice that justification by faith grants to us peace with God. Right. It, it was like I was here, and he was here, and loved me, but I fought against him. He loved me, but I did everything yeah. I could to resist him. And as a result of what I was doing, there was a chasm between us, and I had set myself up as an enemy of his. God said, repent. I said, no. God said, come to Jesus. I said, no. God said, uh, by faith, believe. I said, no. God said, receive Christ. I said, no. God said, go to church. I said, no. And there was this big chasm, and I was an enemy of God, yeah, and, then, right. and then as a result, his wrath was being stored up against me, Amen. but now that I have believed, now that I have been born again, now that I have received Christ as my Savior, I am now justified, yes, and I have Amen. peace with Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Hallelujah. This is why, uh, the, 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 this is why uh, the ebbs and the flow of my Christian life Sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. Uh, this is why I live stable in, in my heart, even though my life might be doing this. Uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of Christians, uh, uh, they'll get saved and they'll be doing right. They'll do right for a long time and they'll get sanctified. And then all of a sudden they'll feel that dip and they dip down. And nothing, it's just not the same anymore. And the newness is wore off and they need to be renewed in yeah, the spirit. Right. But instead they'll raise their hands. I think I need to be born again again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they'll get saved every two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that is why well, this is the, just, the biblical message of justification by faith is the reason why I don't get saved every two weeks. Yeah, it's right. not that I don't have ups and downs, but it's in the midst of the ups and the downs and the in between and all around. I have peace with God. Yeah, he right. has granted that peace. He has given me that assurance that I am his and he is mine and I'm a part of the family of God. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's now right. I gotta hurry up and close. Oh, I gotta hurry and close. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Ah, praise the Lord. Praise it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. With that, I'm a tax pastor. Amen. I, 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 I'll preach the Lord. All right. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good preaching right there. We're going home right now. Thank you. Thank you. Jason had used the scripture in. Uh, in uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And now we're going to look at verse 3 and verse 4. Amen. And, uh, and 3 and 4 said, And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. Yeah. Knowing that tribulation works with patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Now we would glory in tribulation. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm not one that really likes to be going through difficult times no, and, and, uh, and, and finding myself uh, in the middle of a battle. Amen. I find myself more so like, like probably like most people are 
when we start getting into difficult times, we want to we want to find a way out. Yeah, right. So, uh, uh, but uh, Apostle Paul said, "I have learned in whatsoever state that I am, there but to be content." Yeah. Yeah. So he learned whether he was in prison or he was sitting at a, at a table right. at a friend's house eating a meal. It didn't matter to him where he was at because he knew he wasn't home yet. So he was right. just going through Amen. the motion, whatever it is that God wanted from him, and right. however it is that God yeah. would lead him. Whether it was here or there, it didn't matter to him because he knew that he was right where God wanted him to be. Right. But yet he wasn't home. Amen. Now today we're not home either. Right. And we're going to go through some things in this old world and, and, uh, and things that we may not appreciate, things right. that we don't like. But we're going to learn that God is with us and that gives us comfort Amen. because we're not alone in what we're going through. Amen. And I just said to hear that, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, but the scripture said that the trial of your faith be more uh, precious than of gold, yeah. though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of yeah. Jesus Amen. Christ. Yeah. One of these days we'll stand before God. And when we do, even all the things that we've went through in this life, well, no matter what they may have been, and I tell you what, I remember those hard and those bad times a whole lot better than I do those good Amen. and those easy times. Yes. Right. And, but uh, in the process, as we're going through those hard, difficult, tribulation times, even we find ourselves growing in the Lord. Amen. And we're standing in, the, yeah. in faith and we're knowing that God is with us and knowing that we have been justified yeah. by faith Hallelujah. in Jesus Christ. Knowing, amen, that God has given us uh, His Spirit and that we're not walking yeah. by ourselves. Yeah. And uh, what He's requiring of us then is our will to be given to Him. Yeah. And when we give our will to Him, even then he gives us his will and we find there's a peace because yeah. now there's peace with yeah. God. Amen. And that comes through Come surrender. On. Sometimes we yeah. simply have to surrender to yeah. the will of God. On, because please. in the process, God will never yeah. put upon you or I anything more than what we can stand without making a way to escape it. Yeah. And that way is Jesus yeah. Christ Amen. in us Amen. the Amen. Of glory. Amen. Amen. We look for his coming. <clears throat> we hope that one day we'll stand before him. We want to be in that time when we see him face to face. And as Brother Tim was saying this morning, he holds us in his arms and his hands and says that he loves us. And he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. What a beautiful day that's going to be. Yeah. But until then, we may have to go through the trouble. Amen. God wants us to surrender. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. There was a, yeah. a story that I read across uh, as I was studying. And if I get to the right place here, and I hope that I do, he's going to talk about a general. Amen. And this general even had came to a place where uh, he was, how was it? it says a famous general by the name of Douglas MacArthur uh -huh. during World War II, after Japan had surrendered, uh, was meeting his foe, a Japanese general, and the meeting was set up for the Japanese general to occupy or to officially surrender. Now, the Japanese general stuck out his hand to shake MacArthur's hand, and MacArthur said, I cannot shake your hand, sir until you first surrender your sword. Amen. So he made the, the general of the Japanese army take his sword out and hand it to MacArthur. And then MacArthur shook his wow. hand in realizing and also the general realizing that MacArthur and the United States had just defeated uh, this general of the Japanese army as well as the Japanese army itself. Amen. Now, uh, a, a lot of, of us want to uh, shake God's hand. We want to be in a place where uh, we are going to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But we haven't surrendered our sword yet. Amen. And God said to us, he wants us to surrender yeah. our sword before good, amen, he's going to shake our hand. You yeah. know what our sword is? Uh -huh. Our sword is our will. Yeah. God wants us to yeah. give our will to him. Right. And we say, Lord, not my will, but thine yeah. be done. Yes. You, yes. Lord, you saved me. You justified yeah. me by faith in Jesus Christ. And today yeah. I'm forgiven. And here's my will, Lord. And we give it to God. Yeah. And then God reaches out Amen. and he shakes our hand because Hallelujah. now yeah. we are no longer fighting the battle in ourselves, yeah. but we're fighting the battle with him yeah. as he wills Preach and as he wants yeah. that to be fought. Yeah. What a beautiful right. thing it is that we can surrender ourselves to God. We need to do that, don't we? Amen. When we surrender ourselves to God, we find that in patience we possess our soul. Verse 4 said, in patience experience, and experience hope, 
amen, uh, well, patience is something like humility. Amen. Hey, one time I was going to preach at a church, and, and I saw I was starting fasting and praying. What the God that used me, and when I got there to preach, and, and I went out inside this little uh, uh, house trailer, or camper trailer, amen, and I stayed in it all day long, and I prayed and sought the Lord until I, until I felt humble before God. So I got up in church that night and I told the church that I'm ready to preach and I'm humble. And when I said that I was humble, I realized that I was no longer humble. I was proud of the fact that I spent the day trying to be humble. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And then God didn't use pride, but God used surrender. Yeah. God used us being humble. And uh, we are, can reach that, that place of being humble, but it's not some place where we stay. No. Something else may humble us the next day. Right. Patience is like that as well. We might be patient in doing one thing, but not patient in another thing. But in the process, God said here in verse 4, and patience, experience, and experience hope. Amen, and brother. God wants us to be patient. In verse number 3, he said, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And then he said, uh, well, I won't go to number 5. Preach I'll it, stop right ahead. there. But uh, God wants us to become uh, filled with humility. Amen. God wants us to be surrendering our will to Him. Yeah. God wants us not to take it back. Right. That's right. Come on. Right. You see, we got saved. We surrendered to God. Yes. Yeah. We realized that our sin had us bound, yeah. and we needed to be saved. And we yeah. said, "Lord, forgive me of my sin," yeah. and He forgave us. And then, through Jesus Christ, He justified us, like my pastor had preached a few minutes ago. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh, just as if I'd never sinned. Yeah. Right. Amen. He justified us in Christ. Yeah. Amen. But I wonder what has happened from that day until now. Right. Come on. Have we become accustomed uh, very slowly, amen, to the life that we now live? Right. Where we have once surrendered our will to God, gave Him our sword, yeah. shook His hand, and today maybe our it's been a while. Since we shook his hand. Uh -huh. Maybe it's been a time. The old songwriter wrote a song. He said, how long has it been since you talked with the Lord? Right. And told him all your heart's hidden secrets. Right. How long has it been since you called him your friend and you knew that he cared for you? Yeah. Amen. I tell you what, it's something that we got to watch for. It's something we better be on guard about. We once surrendered our will to him, but then we got easy. In Zion, yeah. we became at ease. Right. We found ourselves enjoying having family dinners. Yeah, come on. We found ourselves enjoying mowing the grass and putting on the roof or exchanging a hot water heater. Yeah. Uh -huh. We find ourselves doing this, that, and then the other thing. Right. But what most important is that we surrender our will yeah. and don't take it back. Amen. Amen. Come come on. Point, brother. What is God's will for you today? Amen. Would you do it if God called on you? Would you, would you give it to him if he said, this is what I want you to do? That's what we got to look at ourselves about. Uh -huh. He said, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Amen. Uh, knowing that tribulation works with patience. And patience, experience, and experience hope. Right. I'll tell you what, we could talk about hope for a while, couldn't we? Amen. Amen. One fellow said, hope is, is the prison in which we live in. Right. I never thought of hope as being a prison. But it's what he said in, in his article. He said, hope was a prison that we were living in. He said, and we are in this prison of hope. And, and we look out the window. And, and the window is smoky and, and dark. Yeah. We can't see very good. But we look from out that window of hope into eternity. God's given us a promise. Yeah. He said that in heaven there will be no more death. There will be no more crying. There will be no sorrow. Hey, but he's given us a hope, hasn't he? Yeah. But yet we look through this glass darkly. Yeah, we, we can almost see it, but we can't see it very well. Right. We're living in this prison of hope. Yeah. But one day we're going to trade hope. Yes. Amen. For yeah. face to face. Amen. Amen. We're no longer going to have yeah. to live in faith, but right yeah. now we do. Amen. Bible said we are saved by grace through faith. Hallelujah. Not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. Yes. He said, therefore, being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith has to be exercised. Faith has to be used. Yeah. If we grow at ease, we let faith be set aside. Yeah. And we find ourselves just resting and waiting. Right. One fellow said we are we're like a crawdad Christians. Uh 
Uh-huh. Said we are. You ever seen a crawdad? You ever try to catch one in a pond outside? No. Here he is. He comes up to the shore, up towards the shore, and you reach your hand down there, grab me, he'll start backing up. Uh-huh. God's reaching out to us today, and we're backing up. We're saying, yeah. God, I'm comfortable. I like where I'm at. God says, I want your will. You said, God, I gave it to you 50 years ago. Uh-huh. God right. said, yeah, but about three years later, you took it back. Right. And then when you started doing the things that you yeah. want to do and building that life of comfort that yeah. you so much enjoy today. Preach it, brother. Come on. Sometimes our life of comfort becomes uh, against us, right. even a battle in which the devil uses yeah. as a tool, even to stop us from uh, reaching out to God. Yeah. Our comfort. Come on. I saw the people, I knew people that lived in a chicken coop. I was one of the family members living in a chicken coop. Uh-huh. No, there were chickens in at the time, but they had been ate them. Uh-huh. But we lived in one room, a shack, a, had a lean-to on it. There was no plasterboard in it. I remember sitting in an old brass bed watching the television that my dad had brought home, and I was just a boy, I just young. I real young. I don't know how young. Uh-huh. But I remember <coughs> there was a light that hung from the ceiling uh-huh. that hung down. And there was a knob on that light you turned, and when you did the light come on, or you turned it when you wanted the light to go out. Right. It wasn't much of a house, but it was it was there. Yeah. It was one we lived in. Right. Amen. Now we were poor. Yeah. Guys down the road, they had they were rich. Huh. I better quit I start telling stories here. <laughs> and he had ten rooms and a and a bath, and we had one room and a bath. Uh-huh. <laughs> the path led to the outdoor toilet before the storm blew it down over the hill. Uh-huh. Come on. Amen. We didn't have none. But we had Christ. Uh, yeah. I didn't have Christ then, but I do now. Right. Yeah. But we had love. Amen. Yeah. At least I thought my mom loved me. Right. And I knew my dad loved me. And I knew my sisters and my brothers, they loved me. Right. And together we was living in that little shack. Uh-huh. Today I've got a bathroom. Uh-huh. I'm living in a house with three bedrooms. Uh-huh. Even I've got all the furniture I can stuff into it. My closets are full of clothes. Thank you, Lord. My cupboards are full of food. Yes, my sir. freezers, yes, uh, amen, in which I have one, two, three, four of them are full of food. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. And you see, I'm blessed, aren't I? I've got food yeah. today. I've got a place to live, and yeah. I've got a, a home to live in. Amen. I, I've got gas yeah. in my vehicles, and, if, and I have two vehicles. Amen. I've got a garage so full of tools, uh, amen, amen, I can't get my car in it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not new. Why, just the, uh, just, uh, uh, the other day, the insurance call and said, if you don't put a roof on the house, we're going to cancel your insurance by the 14th of May. Oh. Hey, man, I can't hardly get up on the roof too much, stay very long. Okay. So we got to look around an insurance company said, or a, a roofing company said $33,000. Uh, hey, he gave us an estimate from 66000 down to uh, uh, 26,000, and uh, what we needed was about 33,000. Well, uh-huh. I'm not, uh, that's like putting a gold ring in a pig zone. <laughs> that house ain't worth $33,000. Right. I'm not going to take a hog and put lipstick on it, even I'll tell you that right now. Even going to have it. God's got a better plan. That's right. He does. That's yeah. right. God's got a better plan. Amen. But I'm saying this because we can't get comfortable in the things we have, thinking we've got everything because we don't. But what we do have is we have Jesus Christ, and he lives in our heart. The devil's no relation to me, and we're going to preach more, a little bit more shortly. Amen. 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 God bless you. I'm going to turn that go back. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes, sir. He's good. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Look yes, at um, Romans uh, chapter 5, and thinking about uh, justification. Lord. I don't know where I want to start because I didn't end where I wanted to end. Amen. Uh, but I, I'm going to look at verse number two, and I guess we're going to look at that verse. It says, by whom also we have access by faith. And so now if, if God is the justifier, if God is the one who does the justifying, if uh-huh. God is the one who declares yeah. us righteous by virtue of us having faith in Christ, yeah. he is the justifier. Yes, I, in other words, it is a work of God. It's not my job to justify myself. It's just simply my job to believe in 
in Jesus. Yeah. And when God does the work of justification, he, right. he wipes my sins away. He washes them away. He cleanses them away. He right. removes me from them and me yeah. and them from me. And he changes me on the inside. And I oh, yes. now have been born again. I'm justified in the sight of God. He has yeah. declared me just, declared me righteous. Right. And if it is God's work of justification, yeah. then I would anticipate uh, there to be some fruits uh, with oh, that oh, yeah. you know, And So I looked at that this morning and I found out, first of all, that the first fruit of justification is peace uh, with God. We have peace with God. It's been settled. We have a uh, shalom with God. And I'm not at war with him anymore. He's not at war with me. That's right. I, I don't oh, wake up in the morning with him mad at me and angry at me. And, me. And, uh, oh, yeah. He knows who I am and he's wow. sanctifying me and he's changing me. Yeah. And he knows that even on my best day, I'm still not good enough in myself. So right. on my best day, I still need him to justify me yeah. and watch over me and, and take care yeah. of me and be my yeah. justifier. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I want to be yeah. sanctified and someday I'll be glorified. But yeah. well, this oh, morning, yeah. I'm glad that I am yeah. justified and I'm glad it's his work and uh, not mine. Aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Uh, so there's peace with God. And then verse number, verse number two said, by whom we have access. We have access. Uh, there's that next fruit of justification. Yeah, now Lord. that I've been declared righteous and God has set me free and cleansed me, now he has given me peace with him and now I have access uh, to him again. Yeah. I have access. I can walk with him and talk with him. Yeah, uh, sometimes I'm talking in tongues in Dollar General because I have access no matter Lord. where I'm at. Uh, I have access at the church house. I have access at the schoolhouse. If I ever get invited, I'll have access at the White House. Yeah. Yeah. But no matter what, I do know this. I have access yeah. to God through Jesus Christ yeah. and the justification yeah. that he has declared over my life. Now let us then not confuse that with sanctification. Let us then not say, well, because I'm not exactly where I should be today, that I'm no longer justified. We have to, I think we have to separate the terms. I think we have to keep things in their compartments. Uh, don't allow sanctification uh, to, to take the place of justification. We have access. We have faith. Uh, we, we, through access with faith. Uh, through action, we have, uh, we have yeah, access I mean, by right. faith. And then additionally, I want you to notice in verse number two, here's the next fruit. And he says, and, and, toward the end of the verse, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So when God justifies me, he uh, gives me peace with him. He gives me access to him. He gives me rejoicing in my spirit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes I rejoice because God has justified me yeah. and cleansed oh, me yeah. and declared me righteous in spite of me. Listen, justification was in spite of me when it started and justification will be in spite of me when it ends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's true. Yeah, now I do yeah. like what oh, the pastor yeah. said. Uh, I do like it because he, he added some balance I think to the discussion and some much needed balance because in order to be justified I had to surrender my yeah, sword right. but if at some time I go yeah. up with my axes and pick it back up and sheath it again I need to be careful yeah. I, need, I need to uh, fear lest I fall into the hands of an angry God yeah. Yeah. but right. as long as I lay down my yeah. sword and I keep it down and I access him and he lives in me justification is a beautiful thing and then all of a sudden he said in verse number two that we rejoice. You can rejoice in your justification. Yeah, yeah, right? Come on, that's good. Amen. Yeah. Uh, some people rejoice when they get a new car. All right. Uh, amen. Others rejoice when they get a new truck. All right. Uh -huh. yeah, amen. Yeah. I rejoice when I get a new uh, gun uh -huh. or a new tool. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hey, amen. I, I, but uh, ultimately we need to rejoice. Because Christ has justified oh, us oh, and cleansed us. Oh, yeah. And then fruit number four right, from these verses, I think, is that now we have hope. We have oh, hope. My yes. Yes. Which leads me then to uh, verse number five, where I should be now. Right. And the Bible said, verse number five, and hope make up not a shame. Right. Right. I want you to notice that in hope make up not a shame. You see, on my, on my best day, 
I needed to be justified. Right. On my worst day, I needed to be justified. Right. So no matter what day it is, whether yeah. it's best, worst, or somewhere in between, yeah. my hope is in Christ uh, and uh, Christ uh, alone. Uh, my, my faith is in him yeah. if his blood cannot secure me then I'll never be secured right. if his blood can see me through then I won't yeah. get through if his blood yeah. cannot get me from yeah. this life right. to the next yeah. then I will be bound to earth or even worse yeah. to yeah. hell right. fire but I do believe his blood is able I do believe his blood can save yeah. and can sanctify and can cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. So when it is my time to die, and I turn, I'm about to turn 40 soon, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, almost. Not the young man. Uh, okay, just the young man. All right. <laughs> all right. yeah. When it is my time, though, this I do know. Uh -huh. I will lay down this body yes, sir. in a hope of eternal life. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Amen. Now you you can bury me in the earth or toss me out in the ocean or feed me to the wolves. I don't care what you do with me too, too much. But this I know when I lay it down and when my time comes, I lay it down in hope. The same hope that I live in. The same hope that I rejoice in. The same hope that drives me back to church week after week. Yeah. The same hope that keeps me coming, yeah. keeps me singing, keeps me yeah. rejoicing. That same yeah. hope will lead me all the way to glory. Now watch this. Here's why hope is so powerful. Verse number five. And hope make it not ashamed. Your hope in Christ will never make you ashamed. That's right. right. Oh, I like that. Hallelujah. It will never make you ashamed. And here's why. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Yes. So the reason why I have, you see, I cling to this hope. I, I'm, 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 I'm anchored in, in this hope. I see myself for what I am, and I'm anchored in hope in Christ. I mean, yes. that's it for me. Yes. And that's, that's really it. Come on. Yeah. And it's really it. Yeah. Whether I leave this earth on my best day or my worst day, right. my hope in Christ is my anchor right. to everything and the yeah. only way that yeah. I can feel calm yeah. in laying down this life for the next yeah. is because my hope is in Him. But why is that hope so powerful? Why do I feel it so strongly? Why do I know that I know that I know that He is mine and I am His? Because the Spirit of the living God God has been placed yeah. inside of me yeah. and has shed abroad yeah. the love of God all over my heart. It's, yeah. it's so clear to me. Yeah. Come on, it. Thank you, Lord. It's clear Hallelujah. to me. There's evidence. There's conviction. Man, I didn't mean to preach that one again. I got to go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yes. And the Bible said that the anointing destroys the yoke. And, I, and when, yes, when I'm in the presence of, of anointed preaching, I can just enjoy it. I forget about Amen. what time it is. Right. Amen. I, and yes, that doesn't even, doesn't even matter. Yes, that's right. What matters yeah. is whether or not uh, we are where we ought to be in that's God. Right. Preach about it. Amen. Yeah. I'm, I'm going uh, to be preaching a couple more verses. but I, And now I've got something I'm going to share with you Amen. that I've learned in my studies this week that I think you might want to take note to. Uh -huh. Amen. Now here in the scripture, it says in the verse 7 and verse 8 uh, in uh, Romans chapter 5, he said, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet free adventure for a good man would some dare to die. He said, But God commended, commendeth his love toward yeah. us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. You see, uh, what I realized and as Brother Pastor had preached, we realize that there is a law that takes place here. Right. The law is of sin and of death. Yeah. We've lived in that law of sin yeah. and death. Amen. So uh, we find ourselves getting saved now. Yeah. And now we uh, we find another law. We find it's a law of righteousness and yeah. holiness and justification and a, and a, a pureness, a, a life of right. godliness. Amen. We walk yeah. with God now. But it doesn't mean that the life of sin and death is dead. Right. It just right. means that there's another law that supersedes it. Yeah. Yeah. And that law 
is the law of the Spirit of God, and He lives within our lives. Amen. Now, uh, uh, the, the opposite of the law of sin and death is the law of the Spirit, and we're thankful that the Spirit is what rules yeah. our lives now. Yeah. This Spirit is called the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah, yeah. the Holy Ghost, yeah. and He lives in us. Uh, he uh, <clears throat> he he uh, helped us to overcome our our faults and overcome our sins. Amen. Uh, this law overrides sin and it overrides death. The law of gravity says that what goes up must come down. Right. You can see that if we was to stand and jump and if we would be able to jump with our feet over our head. And some people can jump almost that high. Right. But as uh, soon as they get to that point, they come back down yeah. again because gravity holds them to the uh, earth. Right. Earthly, right? right? Yep. Gravity holds them to the ground. Uh -huh. Amen. But there's a law amen, uh, that is called aerodynamics. And the law of aerodynamics says when we get in an airplane and if we travel fast enough and, and we have enough thrust behind us, it will thrust us into the air and it will overcome gravity. Now right. we've taken airplane rides before, haven't we? Uh -huh. Even where we started in a plane kind of slow, but you could feel him speeding up and pretty soon you could feel the front end of that plane lift up. The wheels are still on the ground all of a sudden, we're in the air. Yeah. Amen. They, with the, the law of aerodynamics that overcome the law of gravity. Yeah. Amen. Well, there's another law. The law of sin and death is always at work. Yeah. Always at work. The yeah. law of sin and death is always at work. But when you combine the combustion of the Holy Spirit with the speed of obedience, a new law lifts you higher and into a, a new plane of spiritual life and victory. Right. And we ought to be rising higher, saints of God. We ought to be rising higher because of the fact that we are in Christ and Christ is in us. God has put his spirit within us and now we overcome the law of sin and of death. Now that's a beautiful thing. Bible said that God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, yeah. Christ died for us. Yeah. Now the scripture didn't say that God commanded his love toward us, although uh, really he has. Hey, but here's what he said. He said, he uh, said, but God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, I wrote down something that I found uh, in, Dick's, uh, in Dick's Bible somewhere, amen, and it said this, a love that cannot be bought. If a man would give all the substance of his faults for it, he would utterly be contemned. Uh, he can no more purchase the love of God than he can purchase the Son of God. Yeah. It's not for sale. Right. Amen. All the substance of man, moral and material, is utterly worthless as a price uh, to buy his love. Yeah. God doth not sell his love. He commendeth it toward us while we That's are good. yet sinners. Yeah. Now, when I read that, and I've read it over and over again, I've memorized it, I've placed it in my heart, I've thought about it, but as I thought about it this week as I was studying, I got to think, well, what does commendeth mean? If it's not command, what does it mean? Yeah. Well, commendeth is a word even that is uh, that we must separate. First of all, we see God commend. And then if ETH is yeah. a, a continuing uh -huh. co um, uh, co uh, commending, it's a continuing of God's commending whatever it is he wants to commend towards us. Uh -huh. And in this case, it's his love. Yeah, praise the Lord. I got to look it up in Webster's Dictionary of 1828. And the word commendeth, amen, out of the King James Bible in 1611, said, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Here's what the, uh, Webster said. Said it's the primary sense is to send. In other words, God sent his love yeah. towards us. Now that's one thing. Yeah. But then he said, or to throw. So God not only sent it to us and let us go to the mailbox open it up if we wanted to, but God threw it at us. Yeah. Amen. One fellow looked at me and he said, God made you as ugly as possible. <laughs> and then throw mud in your face. <laughs> <laughs> I might be homely, but I'll tell you the love of God has been thrown in my heart as well. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. God's love lives in yeah. my heart because God sent it to me. Right. And then through his son Jesus Christ, he threw it at me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He threw the love right. of God. Hence to charge or to bid or to desire or to entreat. God yeah. desires the love of God yeah. to be thrown at you. Yeah. In such a way that you can't resist it. Yeah. In such a way that wherever yeah. you look, yeah. at whichever place you go, yeah. you'll see God's 
love yes. being thrown in your direction, and you'll know that there's a Savior yes. today in Jesus Amen. Christ. Yes. He's one that will save us if we'll just call Preach on it. him to get Amen. the job done. Hallelujah. There's a law that we have in our legal world. And it's called the law of double jeopardy. You've probably heard of that. Uh -huh. In other words, it's saying if a man has been tried uh, for a crime that he had committed and was guilty of, and, and then he had been sentenced, he can't be tried for that uh, crime again because it's already been paid for. Yeah. The Bible said that this man, after he had gave uh, one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right of God, hand of God. And how did he put it? He said, for he hath made him Oh my God hath made Jesus uh, to be sin for us yeah. who knew no sin that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Yeah. God had commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And when we received Christ into our life, we our sin had been paid for. Don't you let the flesh tell you again that you're guilty because right. you're not. Right. God commanded. Yeah. That means that that means kind of like uh, if we walk in the light, he is in the light, and the and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, yeah. cleanseth us from all sin. It's yeah. ongoing, hallelujah. Yeah. And so is this commended love that God has sent to us. It's ongoing. God sent his love. God threw his yeah. love. God gave you his love. Yeah. And don't let the devil tell you that God doesn't love you Amen. because he loves you as much right now as he ever has. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we don't have to worry about being tried for yeah. our sins a second time. Yeah. 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 Jesus yeah. has justified us. Right. And he has made us justified just as if we had never sinned. Amen. 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 Right Amen. there. Amen. Oh, I'm so glad that Praise God threw your love to me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Send it my way because I can sure use it. Yeah. Amen. I thank God for his Amen. love. Amen. Father, we love Amen. you. We thank you for the privilege that we've had today to be in the house of the Lord.